It's the next level. Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. When I was 15 years old, I graduated from MIT. Four years later, I bought it. By 24, I had revolutionized the field of medicine, energy, nanotech. And at 30, I designed and launched the first microfusion spacecraft. But there were failures, too. My greatest was nostalgia. I gave people the means to visit the past so they could learn from it, so they could evolve and transform and better themselves. Instead, they became fixated on their most painful memories, choosing to experience the worst moments of their lives over and over again. And why? Because they were afraid. Afraid that once unburdened by the trauma of the past, they would have no excuse not to move gloriously into the future. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And tonight we'll be reviewing Watchmen Season 1, Episode 7, An Almost Religious Awe. And the synopsis for this episode is, Under Lady True's care, Angela undergoes an unconventional treatment with Agent Blake, chases down a lead. Elsewhere, the smartest man in the world delivers a stunning defense of his past actions. <laughs> wow. Talk about a synopsis not telling you really anything about the episode. <laughs> eh, I think that's what they do. It's just like, oh, we're going to entrap them, come listen to this and watch this and... Oh yeah, that's at not least what it give is. you something. Yeah, <laughs> give you a little taste of taste of what's going on. I guess. Um, I I really I I thought this this episode was amazing. I really I really really liked it, and I, I was I commented on another podcast that I sent feedback to that I at this point now with the and I'm sure we're gonna get to it when we get to the, our feedback our top five for this episode that I don't I almost don't even care about anything else. I want the Dr. Manhattan Angela story. I want to know <laughs> like everything else just fades <laughs> for me, just fades to the background. I'm just like I want to know what's going on there. Yeah. Because but I also understand that I am I mean it's not the only thing I want to know. I want to know everything else about that's going on as well. It's just for me that story has become uh forefront. But I know that that that's not everyone's opinion. Yeah. That that not everyone is like gonna think that's the the big story they want to know. But uh, for me, yeah, that's uh, I just I was so just amazed at the end of the episode, just jaw dropping to go what <laughs> you know at the end there when we get the the huge reveal. Yeah, exactly. And I was very very wrong, uh, but I <laughs> I too myself was I thought the actual episode was amazing. Uh, this was so much information in one episode, but still leaving us with more <laughs> questions too. And I'm just hoping for more, uh, like for like a like a two hour finale. I'm sorry, that would be amazing. <laughs> Well, and like you just said, I, I was listening to our podcast from last week, and we had this whole discussion about Cal and who Cal was, and is he Panda, or is he this, or what was the accident that <laughs> happened? And then we get this this week's episode, where we're like, what? <laughs> that was way out there in left field. So, like, that that would have been the last thing that I would have thought yeah. of from Cal. Though, and I don't think I have this in my notes, so I'll I'll talk about it a little bit here. I will be honest, now that we look back at things, we can see where we should have seen the evidence yeah. of it that were now little comments that he made and things that happened and things that Blake said, things that he said to Blake, things that Angela said. Suddenly they all fall into place as to who he is. And, but there's no way, I mean, I challenge anybody to try to say they knew this before the big, like before the reveal of when, I mean, obviously we start thinking about it as soon as Lady True, well, again, I don't have my notes and we're already getting into it. So we'll get into more of it, but it's just totally out of left field. 
the the huge reveal at the end of this episode. And we really don't even we haven't we're not a hundred percent on it yet, but we're a hundred percent on it that he's Doctor Manhattan. I mean, it's it's got to be right. There's no other explanation. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> No, especially at that ending scene, which he has in her hand. Sheesh. Yeah, when she's pulling the little symbol out of his head, and we can see in her eyes the blue reflection starting to, to happen. And she calls him John. So we know, and, uh, you know, we're going to get it. We, if you watch the previews, I watched the preview for next week's episode. We are going to get at least part of how this happened. Ah, which is amazing. Yeah, which I, I, I'm really looking forward to this week's episode. Yeah, which actually would lead us into our top five. That's it. Tick tock away. want to start first or shall i no why don't you go first because i was listening to our our podcast from last week i think i started last week so it's your turn to start this week all right well my number five would be seeing angela's history how she wanted to be a hero all due to her parents passing in vietnam it was very tragic but that story was needed apparently you know uh, her grandmother who is will's mother tried to get her but obviously she didn't even know she existed until she pursued and went through it but died of a heart attack the day that they were supposed to leave her and angela as a child angela was a child and she was ready and she just dies even after surviving one wow that was crazy but i guess that with all the symbolism that was going on around what she had to do in vietnam kind of like one of those workers that just created all this dr manhattan stuff because she was doing that too and seeing what she was subjected to when she was in vietnam i guess that's where her love grew too of dr manhattan yeah that's interesting you bring that up because i i didn't even i hadn't even thought about that until now that you're right we see her kind of working in that sweatshop kind of environment where she's making those those dr manhattan dolls and Obviously, there's a huge, just, it's a gig, it's a gigantic, he had a gigantic influence on that country. I mean, he basically single-handedly conquered that country. Yeah. If you, if you want it for the United States. And so to, to find out at the end, this relationship is, I'm really looking forward to next week's episode when we find out more about it. But you, you are right to comment on your, what your number five is just this, this whole tragedy of her life at the beginning. I mean, there's her mother and father and they're enjoying this celebration on the street. And that opening is what my number five is, by the way. And we hear that kind of summary of what happened to John Osterman and how he became Dr. Manhattan and all that stuff. If you, uh, as they panned through the little VCR store where she rents the tape, there's a stand up of Dr. Manhattan that is straight out of the comic book. It is an image the, it is the Dr. Manhattan image right there in the in the VCR, the, the rental. Yeah, store of there. what he looks like in the comic. In the comic, yeah. Drawn so out. Was really, that, yeah. Was, that was really cool to see, to have that little Easter egg callback there. And then we, we just see the tragedy of her life that she, she loses her parents. She loses her grandmother all in a relatively short span of time. Yeah. From what we can see. I, I did pause uh, during that opening. I paused and there is a flag in the background that tells us that it is Saigon 1987. Yeah. And they had VVN Day was on the on that flag. So I don't know what the VVN is like. Maybe Vietnam victory something. Uh, I'm not really sure. But it was it was interesting to see that. I, I love how they, they slipped the title of the episode there on the background of the <laughs> cell. And just as as I went through watching this the, on the third time, I don't think I picked up on all of the the memories of Will that are still seeping into her brain. Yeah. Because as as we're going through that opening where we see the bomb explosion and her parents get killed, we also see that she still has some of Will's memories seeping in to her we're seeing the burning of tulsa we're seeing the kkk members pulling men pulling the man out of his car and and just all these different images that she got from wills that are now that are now basically you know interspersed into her memories yeah as well 
Definitely. That would lead me to my number four, which would be yes. Lady True's daughter is really a clone of her own mother. That is something that I didn't think about because, you know, there's all this stuff about cloning. We've been seeing it through uh, Ozymandias or Adrian Veidt dealing with clones on a consistent basis. But I didn't think of anything of it, of the daughter. I thought it was just her daughter. So that seeing that was mind-blowing experience right there. Yeah, it's totally, it was totally crazy. And, and there are so many things in this episode that were totally unexpected that I would have never, I, I never would have thought that the the daughter or the, the the girl was a clone of Lady True's mother. That would like there would have never been a realm of possibility in my head where I would have thought that. Yeah. You know, until she just flat out comes and and says it. Yeah. And you know, where Angela's questioning her, and Angela's like, "Well, whose memories are you putting into her head?" And Lady True's like, "I'm putting her own memories in there. That's my that's a clone of my mother." And I'm just like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> you know, where does that come from?" And uh, that leads us right into my number four, which is just that little thing, that lady, uh, that little thing, Lady True, at the beginning of the episode where she comes in to Angela and she's like, we've had this conversation before. And she's like, yes, and this is where you ask this. And this is where I say this. And this is where I give you the injection, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or she's like, she gives it, and this is where I give you the tutorial injection. And then we get this, she stabs her with this needle, and we get this kind of narrative that runs through Angela's head, telling her what's going on in her body. You've taken someone else's nostalgia, and here's what we have to do. We have to get pure memories, and we have to interweave them into your brain to help flush out it's almost like a uh, i know before my my father passed away he did he uh, did dialysis once and i had a friend of mine who uh, in florida had a kidney transplant and he was going through dialysis it almost sounds like it's a memory dialysis that they're doing yeah with with her where they they take blood out and put good blood in they're taking you know the bad memories out putting good memories in so i really i really uh, i like that idea and i like that whole conversation that she has with lady true and uh, just the whole treatment when we find out there towards the end of the episode when we find out that it's an elephant that she's getting these memories from that it's not will through the whole episode she keeps asking Lady True, well, let's open the, let's ask Will ourselves. And Lady True never really, she never says that Will is the one who she's hooked up to. She just says, and I, I noted this the, the last time I watched it, that, that she was, Lady True was very particular to say, you shouldn't see him right now because of the, your treatment. But she never says he's the one who she's getting this fluid from. So I really like that. Yeah. Definitely. So that was your number four? My number four, yes. Lady True. My number three would be, apparently, elephants have a good memory, and that is what Angela's hooked up to, so you already brought that up, you know, just to, to keep her own memories. So apparently, since elephants have a good memory overall, you know, they remember everything... So I, I thought, you know, the one thing that can cure her of her issue with nostalgia would be an elephant, I guess. Uh, I thought that was amazing that they would actually use that. At first, I thought it was just the alien squid from Adrian Veidt or Ozymandias, but it seems that is the way to get rid of nostalgia because it harbors all other memories, I guess, deep-rooted memories. And that's, right. you know, that's the way they're able to fix and cure this issue, which is a redundancy, what, what you were saying before, because she has to constantly tell her and give her that injection that gives her the tutorial. Yeah, and, and I mean, obviously, I think we're, we're seeing here in this episode is we're seeing the last time that's going to have to happen. I don't expect in the next episode that we're going to see Angela wake up again and she's going to have to give her this this shot again. I'm And, you know, I don't we don't. Lady True doesn't really tell us how many times she's had this conversation. It's almost like if you if you've ever known someone with Alzheimer's or you've ever had to deal with someone with Alzheimer's where you yeah. have the exact same. My mom didn't have Alzheimer's, but she she did towards the end of her life. She suffered from dementia, and we would have the same converse, the literally word for word, almost the same conversation with her just minutes later. And it's yeah. it's it's rough to see that. 
but it, you, uh, it's something that, that you deal with. So it was, it was interesting to see that. And also when you bring up the, the thing about nostalgia, when Lady True's giving her speech to all the people, she mentions that as her mistake, as one of her few mistakes that she's made in her life was this developing of nostalgia that she wanted it to, to be used as like a treatment for Alzheimer's for a treatment of dementia, but people didn't do it that way that people started to view it as a way to regress to their worst memories, to, to keep reliving yeah. their, the bad times of their life instead of the good times. So it's, it's uh, that, that was really an interesting scene between her and Angela. She's kind of explaining what the treatment is, what we're going to have to do and all this. And, I was a little surprised at the end of the episode when Angela rips those tubes out and then starts to wander around that Lady True didn't didn't like, we need to get you hooked back up to the elephant or something. I guess she's had enough of it at that <laughs> point if she's, a, if she's able to, to do that kind of stuff. And that leads us to my number three. Yeah. Yes. And that, my number three is just that whole, that scene between Agent Blake and Judd Crawford's wife when we find out that it seems it almost seems like she was kind of the one and maybe Judd was involved with the seventh cavalry, but we definitely see here that his wife definitely had some sort of involvement with the seventh cavalry because she's <laughs> it was so funny <laughs> when she's clicking those she's like she's like giving this whole confession and Agent Blake by the way, it wasn't until the third time watching this that I realized how amazing it is to see those two actresses on screen together. Yeah. Gene Smart and Frances Fisher. I was just like, really? That is it Francis Fisher? Is that right? I think so. I think so. That's it's just amazing to see those two actresses there on screen kind of going at each other that way and, and when she grabs that remote and she's like clicking the switches and it won't go and she's got to do like three or four times before the trap door <laughs> finally opens and she falls through it was just we had this moment of levity in the middle of the episode that i thought was was really great we do get this this idea that well we get two ideas we get number one we get the idea that judd's wife was somehow involved with the seventh cavalry but also I'm assuming that was Senator Keen that she called on the phone and asked, do you want me to kill her? And I was just like, what? <laughs> and, you know, and then, of course, Agent Blake has this whole conversation with Senator Keen. And we start to get the understanding that Keen wants to become the next Dr. Manhattan. So he needs to have Lori Blake around, you know, because she was so close to Dr. Manhattan. Hmm, definitely. Mm -hmm. That would lead me to my number two. Yes. That would be Adrian Veidt's judgment by the clones. I, I, they found him guilty, but what is to come of him? You know, what is his real verdict? Except for him just farting <laughs> in the face <laughs> of the clones, you know? It, it's weird. It's just such a weird universe that they are in at that point. And it's just like, has he gotten to that point where... He's trying to do whatever he's trying to do, and he's just, I. it's like, I fart in your general direction. <laughs> uh, not to quote a Pony, Monty Python, you know, skit, but it, it kind of fits, and I, I think that's where they were going with it. Oh, yeah. it was, <laughs> it, And it was interesting that I, I was listening to another podcast this week, and um, they, they talk about the official Watchmen podcast, and... During that whole scene at the beginning, the judge says, this is the 365th day of this inquiry. And what was conf uh, confirmed by Damon Lindelof, as I heard on this other podcast, they said, is that every every scene we have, every episode where we have a scene with Adrian Veidt is a year from the last one. Huh. So that's why in the two episodes, one where we see, that, we see him getting the cake. Yeah. And because it is... It is one year from, so each of those little scenes represents a year that a year has passed since the last one. So I thought that was, that was really interesting that they, they filmed all of, all of his scenes or all of these scenes, at least, I don't know if it is the only scenes he's in. All of these scenes were filmed separately in like a two or three week period in uh, somewhere else like Scotland or uh, someplace like that. They were. They were saying so they filmed all those scenes at once and then and now they're intercutting them but each of those scenes is a year apart so the 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 so the last episode where we see him go out and, and build the big sign that said save me and he gets yanked back in that was a year ago from when this one was oh wow 
so yeah, so I thought that was really, really interesting that they brought that up, that the fact that all of his scenes were separate from the show and they've just kind of been edited in, which makes sense. I mean, they wouldn't have to. There's no no other cast members are in it. There's, no. It's just him. That brings us to uh, my number two. Yeah. Uh, it was just, I, I found it interesting. I didn't notice it until my last watch, but on the wall behind Lori when she's in that basement is a drawing of like the Cyclops eye that's on the wall there when they're doing whatever they're building in that basement there. So I thought that was really interesting that all these, these were doing all these, these seven cavalry members. And obviously I think we're meant to understand that Wade has somehow infiltrated that group. And so I, I, I would not be surprised next week if we don't see that Wade is, is in there somewhere in a, in a uh, Rorschach mask or seventh cavalry mask. And then of course the, the finding out that Joe Keen wants to become the next Dr. Manhattan, as you know, as she said in her confession, she was like, Oh no, we're not, we're not, uh, it's not the presidency that we're looking towards. Now we're looking for something even bigger. No, oh, wow. Then the, pre- yeah. And so they're looking to, to figure out a way to either kill Dr. Manhattan and then remake Senator Keene into a Dr. Manhattan, or somehow, I'm not sure what their plan is. But I thought that was that was really, really interesting. And he just kind of lays out the, the whole plan there for her. Yeah, yeah, that he does. <laughs> and I think we have the same number one, but go ahead, uh, you start with it. Well, that ending. <laughs> I was wrong. You know, you already spoke about it. You know, apparently Cal is really Dr. Manhattan, and she, you know, Angela had kept that secret. The whole, that whole accident was a ruse that we did not know. This was an amazing story twist <laughs> that we all just did not see coming. I thought Cal was Panda, and wow, I was yeah. wrong. You know, this is amazing. I want to see what happens with this because honestly, it, all we have is that little symbol and how it glows blue mm-hmm. that Dr. Manhattan does on his, you know, forehead. That's that's the symbol of him. Yeah. And she holds that. I'm wondering what power comes or if he's able to regenerate from that and then become and then does something about what's going on in the next episode or two. Yeah, no, that's that's excellent. I love what you just said there because the the huge reveal there, and of course we start to suspect it when Lady True says, you know, she says, "Well, you haven't asked me who he is. I've just told you that Doctor Manhattan is hiding out here in on Earth in Tulsa, and you've not asked me who he is." And so it it made me wonder for a second, maybe Lady True doesn't realize that it's Cal, but mm. I, I that didn't. But then I went back and I was like, as I was watching it the last time, I was like, she must know that it's Cal, but maybe she doesn't know if Angela knows. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think we'll find out next week for sure. Like a hidden yeah. secret that only she thought she knew. And then eventually, you know, Angela has been hiding those memories. Yeah. And I'm not. Because why didn't they show up in her, you know, going back into her memories? You well, would think I that think Lady True s- could actually see those I, memories. I think we're you gonna know? S- no, no, I don't think so. I don't think she can see. I don't think she was able to see the memories, but I, I think they don't meet until later. Yeah. It's, it's going to be interesting. I think I, I watched the preview for next week's episode and we are going to get a little bit of their, at least some of their relationship. Ah, uh, Okay. In the next episode, the, at least the preview showed her interacting with Doctor Manhattan, a younger version of her, yeah, interacting with Doctor Manhattan. And it, it should, the, the the preview for the next episode. I uh, hope it doesn't spoil it. It's two days away, so and <laughs> if you're hearing this, you're you'll probably be hear it, it that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It, the, the preview for the next episode showed her in her Saigon police officer outfit. Okay, so in her uniform, her Saigon police officer uniform, meeting. Dr. Manhattan. Hmm. So I, I think I, I think we're going to see that in the next episode. We're going to see how that relationship formed and that it that she had a relationship with Dr. Manhattan prior to him becoming Cal. So I don't know if they're going to show us how I, I'm assuming they're going to show us how he became Cal or how they suppressed that personality in the body of Cal or how they did that. I think we're going to see that in the next episode. But yeah, I'm, I'm with you. That it was just huge. And it, it wasn't until un, until Lady True says, well, you haven't asked me. And then suddenly we see Angela storm out yeah. that I went, oh, 
it's gotta be Cal. You know, and I'm like, is it, but I mean, like, actually what I was thinking at first was I was like, is it Cal or is it the kid? Yeah. The son, the, the eldest son of her partner who was killed on the dark night. I had a, I started to kind of think that maybe it was him, but that didn't really fit as far, you know, but we've seen that kid do some crazy things. So maybe it, you know, that was my first thought was that it was the kid. Yeah. And then it wasn't. And then as soon as they showed the shot of Cal kind of asleep on the couch with the Ernest Hemingway book for whom the bell tolls there on his chest that I went, oh, and then, of course, she digs out the hammer and what a brutal like, don't you think they could have figured out a different way for her to reveal who he was to him? You know, she calls him John, and he's like, my name's not John. And she's like, no, baby, your name is John, and now I'm going to bash your head, your skull in with this hammer. I was just like, like, why couldn't they have found a different way to do that? That's all I'm going to say with that, because it, really, that's a brutal, brutal way to do that. And I did think it was interesting that Lady True brings up, when she starts to talk about Cal, she brings up the fact that total amnesia is rare, Outside of soap operas, and that's true. Yeah, I will say though, in my in my life, I have a friend of mine who, well, I, I can't say in my life for this person, but he knew a man who was a pilot who had some sort of attack and did have total amnesia, lost everything, and it never did come back. Hmm. Wow. And this guy was a pilot; he knew him overseas. And then I have a, a another friend of mine who her husband had. A, a stroke or something similar to a stroke and he lost everything prior to like five years ago or he lost everything he lost everything from five years ago to that day wow so he lost like a whole five five years and over the last this was i want to say this was three or two or three years ago that he lost his memory and they've had there's been twice since then that he's woken up and it's basically everything has reset. Oh wow! To that whatever that day was that he lost, that he lost it, it reset to that. Because I she commented one time on on a Facebook posting that that this had happened, and she's like, the only good thing about it is now she gets to relive some of the memories they had. Like a. a I don't want to speak out of turn. I won't say her name and I won't say their name. So it doesn't, it doesn't get out there, but like they were, I'm, I'm, uh, I live in Oklahoma. For those of you that don't know, that are listening. I live in Oklahoma where the, uh, the, uh, where the band mercy me is from. And they, they filmed the mercy me film. You can only imagine here. Uh, they, her and her husband were in the, there's a, a scene at the end of that movie where there's a crowd in a theater and they just they just picked a, a random night and picked a bunch of people to set in this theater and they filmed them for the movie. They are in the movie in that that background part. And that is one of the memories that he lost oh, wow. in this accident. So that she did comment. The only good thing is she gets to show him whenever this this relapse happens, they'll watch that movie. I can only imagine. And when it gets to the end. You can see them in the crowd and she'll pause the movie and go, see, that's us in the crowd there. And it's like he's seeing it for the first time. So as 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 horrible and tragic as it, it does happen in real life, yeah, uh, but this this amnesia thing. It so. does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did we have any notes that we haven't talked about already? Uh, I think. Yeah. It's like I, I think we went over everything um, that we had. <laughs> top five <laughs> um i did yeah, i know I that think, i did <laughs> yeah oh that little i i did i think it, it didn't come up i, I mentioned about the, three, the year thing but it, we didn't talk about that bian that scene with between bian and angela where she asks her why she became a cop and she's showing her all those different little like almost a rorschach test where she's showing her oh yeah different panels and says you know which woman is more uh what was it which woman is more afraid and she says, the, the one who's about to jump. And Beyond asks, well, how do you know she's about to jump? And Angela's like, well, why else would, why else would she be on that ledge if she's not going to jump? And uh, then what was the other one? Oh, it was the, the man. Which man do you trust more? And it's there's like a picture of a man flying a kite and a picture of a man giving like candy to a child. Exactly. And yeah. She, and she says, oh, I trust the candy man more. And she's like, well, why? And he's like, she's like, because nobody flies a kite alone. 
<laughs> I thought that was, and then, and then of course she shows the picture of the woman who's kind of looks like she's yelling, and she's like, "It's the same picture." And Deanne's like, "Is it the same picture?" And it wasn't because you know? the hands were different. Were they? Were there's little slight changes to it? Yeah, I didn't, the hands I were didn't definitely different. I actually paused it, and okay. yeah, I think hands were apart at one point, and then they were closed at another. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so there were there were little differences in the in the the two pictures. They were very subtle, yeah. but you know, if you examined them for more than like five seconds, you could actually see it. Yeah, uh, and then of course that leads Angela to the memory of her identifying the man who gave the bomb to the bomber who killed her parents, and we see her as even though she flinched when the gunshot happened. She still definitely stood there through the whole thing. Oh, yeah. And the, the cop gives her her badge and says, come see me when you're old enough. So I, I think it's inter- I think that's another scene that I think I wonder if we're going to get a that in a flashback scene of Angela with that cop again, or if they're just going to kind of gloss over it. Yeah. And I already talked about the, the scenes were a year apart. Yeah. And we, we did. Did we talk about. Lady True, yeah, we did talk about yeah. that with the with the 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 elephant things. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, no feedback, no feedback for this episode. No, nope. uh, I did. I I think I mentioned either before we started recording or right when we started recording. I mentioned the fact that I don't, I almost don't want anything else now. I just want the 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 love story between Angela yeah. and Doctor Manhattan, Cal. But uh, I I'm sure we're gonna get more uh, to the rest of this story. I don't think they haven't confirmed a season two yet. No. So I don't know if this is going to be a, a self-contained story or – and someone mentioned that Damon Lindelof has, has said this is going to be a self-contained story like the comic book was. But really, the comic book kind of kind of ends – yes, the comic book has an ending, but it really kind of ends with this giant squid in New York and just us finding out that the world's coming together. It doesn't really – so it's – so yeah, it uh, be interesting to see what – what else? So what do we have for Comic Talk? Well, the I believe you actually watched it. Trailer for The Boys came out for Amazon Prime. I did, yeah. A teaser trailer for The Boys came out. It was. It didn't sh- give a lot of detail. It just uh, kind of reminds us of uh, we are, apparently we're going to get all of our favorite characters back again. Well, the ones that are alive anyway. And uh, they did show, uh, there was a clip of the the uh, the runner guy the the oh the African American guy who was the runner they there's a clip of him in the hospital in a hospital bed yeah there's different scenes that uh, I'm looking forward to to that season two of the boys coming out yeah and the Black Widow trailer David Harbor yeah, yeah. David Harbor came out and you know we, I guess we know what happened to uh, his character in Stranger things <laughs> <laughs> he became the russian captain america yes yeah. <laughs> at least that's what it looks like from the from the black widow trailer it looks like he's kind of in a captain america costume but it's all red and he's speaking with a russian accent so and he gained weight <laughs> uh, well i mean he was always kind of a big guy so uh, yeah well it's pretty funny how they make a, a joke about it and if you guys oh, yeah. love that you should go to Strange Indeed's Facebook page. I threw a, mem- a meme on there with that. It's like, oh, this is what happened to Harper. <laughs> and he he became, uh, I forget what they call him, uh, Crimson. I don't know. It's like like you stated, it was the Captain America of Russia. <laughs> so, yeah. And yeah. Since I his character, the since the character of uh, Hopper. Harper, uh, Hopper is yeah. in, in Russia at the end of uh Stranger Things season three. I guess that's yeah, what he. Spoiler came. alert! If you haven't already, <laughs> you haven't watched the latest season of Stranger Stranger Things. So there's a lot of build up to uh, this coming Sunday when you get this episode. If you're gonna watch, please watch Crisis as well on CW. On uh, it starts with Supergirl. So I know that Ben Beck's gonna be doing that with DC Prime Time. I have been anticipating this for so long, ever since season one of Flash. So they've been seeding that since the first season of Flash. So, because basically they tell you Flash gets lost in crisis. That's the headline on the newspaper. So now they spruced it up, moved it up. We're in the last season of Arrow. And I 
don't believe uh, Legends is of Tomorrow is going to be continuing on after this. It's probably it's going to be that last season as well. They haven't really confirmed, but everything is coming down to this one particular miniseries that is based upon these shows on the CW, which I do love and I do care about. I at one point I didn't, but I read the actual Crisis on Infinite Earths years ago when I was a kid. I enjoyed that comic and that trade. This is a little bit different because they have to do it within TV form, but we do get Tom Welling as Clark from Smallville. We do get Brandon Routh as Kingdom Come Superman. We get Kevin Conroy as Kingdom Come Batman. We get Batwoman. If you haven't been watching, you should. I like it. I enjoy it. Regardless of ratings and everything, I think the actress is really good at it. And, you know, it is woman power, and I do agree with it. Same thing with Supergirl. And I enjoy those shows. I, I really do. So if you're interested in this whole thing because it was such a legendary trade or comic book back in the day, I recommend you guys go watch that. And uh, definitely if you are you have do follow DC Prom Time, actually do submit some feedback for that for Ben and his partner because honestly, I, you know, it, this is like the best thing to come to TV in a while. So that's all I have for comic talk this week. So, <laughs> all right. We'll give a special thanks to Kirk Manley for our, our podcast, our new podcast art. You can, uh, you can check out Kirk Manley's work on his website, which is studiokm.com. You can also interact with Kirk on Twitter at, he is at Batman KM. He's on Instagram at Batman KM as well. And you can check out his art at batmankm.deviant.com as well. If you want to contact Kirk, you can also contact him through email at kirk at studiokm.com. Kirk Manley, good friend of our show and our podcast artist. Yes, and if you're not aware of his artwork, if you have ever gone to a Walker Stalker Con over the past, I would say, five, six years... Kirk has been the predominant uh, poster artist for the convention itself. So it was all his creation as far as the poster art for each convention that comes out. I always collect him when I go there. He's a great artist. He's a great friend. And I always thank him for this art that he gave us. So, you know, thank you, Kirk, for doing that. It's amazing. Absolutely. And if also you want to listen to us, just as a side note... We are also on YouTube, so I'm just going to sit that out there again. We are on YouTube. We have Panels to Pixels podcast on YouTube. So if you're not listening to us here, you could listen to us there or watch us. <laughs> we can also be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple iTunes, or whatever podcast player of choice you use. If there's a chance, if there's a ability to give us a rating on there please give us a high rating a good rating if you appreciate the podcast if you don't then... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can check out our our website which is panels to pixels podcast.com that's panels to pixels podcast the two is spelled out t-o and you can also submit feedback through our facebook group which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels that's the that's the best place to interact with us. In fact, we throw up a a post every week, a feedback post every week for whatever episode we're going to be doing uh, the next week. We give you the deadline for when that feedback needs to be su uh, submitted and all of that. You can also email us at panels2pixels1 at gmail.com. That's panels2pixels1, the T-O spelled out right there in the middle, and the number one at gmail.com. Or if you want to call us, you can leave us a recorded voice message on our dedicated voicemail line, which is 845-350-2095. Again, that's 845-350-2095. Awesome. And if you want to hear me on another podcast, which I do, I am the co-host on The Walking Dead Talk Through with Brian Malosh on Talk Through Media. We review The Walking Dead each week when the show is on. Right now, it's currently in its hiatus. So we are currently now in our hiatus. So we have uh, about a two and a half month 
uh, leave of absence, but if you want to catch up, go listen to our previous podcasts on there on talkthroughmedia.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. So there's a lot going on on talkthroughmedia.com for other podcasts that we have. I always recommend everybody go there and check it out. Maybe you'll find something else that you're interested in listening to as well. The more, the merrier is what I say. So Absolutely. More podcasts, man. I love it. I love it. You can hear me right here, of course, and I do submit feedback to various other podcasts on other podcast networks. I submit feedback every week to Strange Indeed, which is on the Podcastica network. They are currently covering season two of Castle Rock, and I regularly submit feedback to the We Have to Go Back Lost Revisited podcast, which is a joint podcast between this network and the Podcastica network. They are currently in season, oh gosh, season three of Lost, of the Lost Rewatch. Yeah. So uh, if you if you enjoyed the TV show Lost or if you're just watching it for the first time, watch yes, it along definitely. with definitely. As well as you could hear Steve's voice also on House Podcastica when they do The Mandalorian. That's right. So he always submits a lot of voicemail to them, and they do enjoy it. They love him. And, of course, we always recommend TV Podcast Industries. Their podcast is covering Watchmen as well. I send them a I send them an initial feedback uh, post because they, they get the episodes early and get to release their <laughs> episodes a little earlier than ours, but I send them a feedback post, uh, feedback voicemail as well. Yeah, I got to actually speak to Derek a little bit this week through Messenger. and Oh, nice. Yeah, he, he had obtained the first eight episodes before they came out. So, oh, okay. So okay. they have the first eight episodes before they came out through... Uh, for HBO, which is amazing, but I gave him, uh, before I actually posted the last episode up, uh, I mentioned it to him, I said, hey, please listen to it, I just posted it, and he did, he goes, he goes, oh, well, uh, you're close, but I like that thought, and it's a still a possibility, and, and then I finally got to watch the episode, because he, he had it early, <laughs> and he, yeah, and I'm like, oh my god, goodness he goes he didn't want to spoil me so <laughs> yeah i guess they got like they got the first six episodes and they thought they weren't going to get any more but i guess if they've gotten through eight now that means they've got uh the next uh yeah because this sunday's episode will yeah. be eight i believe yeah two episodes left two episodes left and eight and nine yeah i'm curious where it ends <laughs> yeah i'm curious myself so with that thanks everyone for listening i'm mark and i'm steve and this is Panels to Pixels. Good night, everybody. Good night.